We'll call a special meeting of uh, <clears throat> New Glass City Council to order. Welcome the guests, <clears throat> council, and the administration. With that, all the order. All right, Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Grove. Present. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Chami. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. And Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. All seven present. With that, the invocation will be by Chief Justice. Father, Lord, we thank you for the day and your many blessings and many favors. Thank you for the beautiful fall weather. Please be in this meeting, Father. Let thy perfect will be done. Bless our troops, our first responders, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And with that, we'll go down to the comments from members of the public. Yes, please. Yes, all of all your uh, your right. EOW number. Make sure my pen works. <laughs> John Craybacher, K R A B A C H E R, 307 North Henry Street. Social? Um, <laughs> 9, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That's a bogus number. You, and, uh, <laughs> um, here tonight, I guess there's an ordinance tonight about regulations for the chickens. You know, and yeah, when we first started the, the whole chicken <clears throat> thing, uh, I did talk to Randy, and we, you know, and we were talking. I, I didn't mention that there should be some regulation to the chickens, but I think you, there's an overreach on this. You know, it's overregulated. If you want people not to do something, you know, what you do is you overregulate it. If you don't want a business, you zone it out. You know, here we had an election. You know, when Mike Lowry. Uh, got the petition for a referendum. I was number six to sign it. I said, take it to the people. And the people have spoken. So they've spoken in a big way to have chickens, you know. It's not really chickens. It, you know, it's about food. You know, and it's about, you know, you, do, you can grow your own food one way or another. After all, I would like to have you know, goats and sheep at the garden who take care of the grass, but that ain't going to happen. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. Anyway, one of the things is is the chicken coop, and is that you have to pay for as an accessory building. I don't, unless you have to pay for a doghouse to have an accessory building, I don't think that should be an accessory building. Uh, another thing is having a permit for the chickens, you know, is five dollars per year. Well, the accessory building is thirty-five dollars to get, a, you know, to for the fee. That's another five dollars. That's forty dollars just to have chickens. I, you know, unless you're going to do that for other animals, I just don't think it's fair to to have that at all, you know, in that. Um, there was another thing, and I just can't remember what it is. But anyway, that is my number one thing. You know, you know we're not going to, as far as I know, we're not going to, I'm not going to have chickens, so I don't have some real skin in the game. Other than, I, I agree, you know, that my backyard is my backyard. In this, in one of the ordinances, it says that it can come into your backyard at any time. Well, even in journalism class, we say that we can't even write a story unless we can see from the sidewalk. Now, if you can see it from the sidewalk, that's a whole different story. If you can see it from the alleyway, that's a whole different thing. But for somebody to even have a privacy fence, and for something for somebody to come into my yard, Hey, it's trespassing. You know, simple as that. That's just trespassing. 
I think that should be taken out completely or rewritten in a different way. Uh, after all, not too long ago, you did something about um, about drones. You can't have drones come over because it's basically a trespass. You know, there is a column that goes over our, our, our yard. It should be the same way. You know, why should you allow somebody come into your yard and tell you you can't do that? unless there's a complaint or something, you know, and then they should kind of contact you and say, cannot, you know, about the complaint. I think that should be taken out. But it has to do with the privacy. Thank you. Okay, we have Craybonker, uh, 307 North Street. <coughs> And um, I definitely agree with my husband that, that the way that ordinance is written is overreach. And um, as a former member of the um, Charter Review Committee, um, one of the things that we tried to do in rewriting that charter, which there were some sections put on this recent ballot, I have a com comment about that as well, but um, the Charter Review Committee it was made up of six individuals from New Carlisle who didn't have a skin in the game except they wanted the charter <coughs> to be more easily understood by residents, especially when you consider that we have immigrants um, and uh, other language speakers in our community. So um, I, I think that this ordinance is way overkill for what we had envisioned after that initial vote last April. We said, yeah, there needs to be some, some guidelines. Yeah, there needs to be some conversation with people. But the city doesn't have the right, in my opinion, to just show up in somebody's backyard without a courtesy call, without a call to say, hey, we want to come over in two days, and here's the complaint we've received. You know, because, and then even if they come and do an inspection, an inspection, then the person should be given at least a reasonable period to correct. Um, it's going to be a learning game for most people, but we know lots of people in town who have chickens already, and you haven't done jack squat about those chickens, even without an ordinance. So I'm asking the city to be reasonable on what your expectations are. Um, also, um, switching gears, I think the young man is here, the, his mom had come about children learning food skills. And I think it's really important for children to learn how to grow food, how to take care of chickens and, and harvest eggs. You know, when you're hungry, you will be happy that you have the ordinance that allows you to either grow meat birds or chicken uh, that lay eggs. Um, I personally believe our food security is very uh, fragile. And our food supply is tainted by a whole lot of adverse additives that are in our food. Most of them aren't marked on the package. When you buy something, you look at the ingredients. Oh, I can't pronounce most of those words, but there's other ones besides those words that are in <coughs> your food and in your food supply. So, uh, yeah, we as citizens have a right to be concerned about, you know, a, a concern about our food supply and want to have chickens for food security. Um, so that's, that's my comment on that and the way the ordinance is written. I, I, I do think the ordinance sends um, a tone counter to what the Charter Review Committee tried to instill into the redrafted charter. Now, the first couple sections were put on this recent ballot, and I understand that they passed. Am I correct in understanding that? Um, however, um, you know, I'm disappointed with the city uh, failing to have like um, a town hall on the charter. I mean, there, there was maybe one two years ago when it was first brought to the council, but certainly an issue um, like some of the things that we as um, residents of this town felt that the language needed to be simpler and people need to understand why there's a lot of language there. Um, it's not just a two-word charter. Um, 
and uh, what we were trying to accomplish. So I'm hoping that before the next sections go on to the ballot, that the council will make an effort to really communicate with the residents of the city on the charter and allow some of the <coughs> charter members to speak on why they felt the language was not adequate and wasn't clear, and we need to give people a chance to understand what those issues are about. Oh, one last thing. I didn't like the fact that the uh, food security issue on chickens was on the left column, right below the contentious issue one. Several people told me they never ever saw it because you had that huge issue one, and then the last four lines or so were the chicken charter ordinance. And so to me, that was not really fair. Just a minute, Bill. I'm going to address Pat. <coughs> Thank you, son. Anyone else? Uh, Ross Grove, 321 South Scott. Um, I think the bill's a little overreaching for the fact of um, we're just getting started on this matter. Um, a lot of people who are getting into it already know it's going to be expensive. They're going to be looking at those kits. And I believe that getting started gives us the ability to let people get used to the way it is before immediately throwing in the lawsuit stating that they're going to get judged on how they take care of their work, take care of their chickens. And I think, I think it, um, it should just be reconsidered and it's a bit too far to reach. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, Mrs. Krabacher, I wanted to address the uh, placement of the item on the ballot. We had nothing to do with that. that that's the board. That's the board. They they arrange it. So you know, I, I didn't want people listening to what you said, which you had a point that we had anything to do that with that. We did not. No, I understand that. Okay. It's Right. I found it. And, and also to the young man that spoke, thank you for coming and, and uh, speaking to council about your concern with the, the uh, permits on the chicken coops. And uh, hope to see you back again on other matters or just come and visit and listen and watch and learn. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Thanks, with that, I guess the audience section is over. We'll go to the resolutions. Okay, so the resolutions, we have one introduction, one action for tonight. Resolution 2024-15R, introduction, public hearing and action tonight, a resolution authorizing a clinical affiliation agreement with Clark State College. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. And an explanation of this ordinance is uh, to allow the New Kalau Fire Department to be a part of Clark State. And um, as students go through their training, to whether it's going to be LPNs, RNs, firefighters, things like that, they will now be able to, outside of a bunch of other entities, come to New Kalau and do ride-alongs and get real, real world experience while they ride along with us. We sign off, and in, as you probably read, you know, all the liability is basically off New Kalau, but this will help maybe get some newbies coming with New Carlisle and possible future hires. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Bill. 
when I read this, I thought, you know, this would be awesome that we're partnering with Clark State for this training. The only problem I have with the whole entire thing is on Exhibit B, the very last line, proof of COVID-19 vaccinations in accordance with the requirements of applicable regulations. I, if that was stricken, I'd be a yes vote. If that does not go away, I will vote no on it. I think that was their exhibit. Clark State provided that. <clears throat> Yeah, that's not something. City didn't add it. Right. Okay. Then somebody should have a conversation with Clark State because I don't think it's anybody's business <clears throat> if you've had what vaccines or any other vaccine. And it's really nobody's business on COVID-19 or boosters or anything else. I would probably think that if they're probably enrolled at Clark State, then they probably already have all this stuff taken care of, you know, regardless of, like, the opinion. But I just wanted to state that if they're in at Clark State, there's, we, I, I don't think we would be able to change it unless it's voted down and we will not participate. That's an option. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Go ahead, Mr. Bond. Well, I, would, I was just going to say, I guess I would be curious as to what the, where it says requirements of applicable regulations is. I mean, is there, does that give room for exemptions uh, as far as, you know, religious, personal, whatever? That would just be my question. So I don't know if the fire chief, if he can address that. Where did, you, where did you see that at? Under Exhibit B. Oh, still under B? Yeah, the last it's one. The last line that Just I the read. last part of COVID, the COVID. Oh, all vaccinations in accordance with the requirements of applicable regula regulations. Yeah, and maybe and maybe that gives, but maybe, maybe the fire chief knows what that means. I don't know. Yes, it does. It, what it does, it gives Clark State, they screen the people. Anytime you take an, ENT, an EMS course, ENT or paramedic, there is certain vaccinations that you have to have because you're going to be working also in a hospital, uh, doing clinicals, uh, being ORs, doing clinicals. Uh, so you, the, per, the personnel have to have the, those vaccinations. It's mainly not to, per se to work EMS, but it's per se for that course because of the clinicals and the labs that the students have to go through. And yes, there's provisions for, you know, if, the, if it's a religious uh, circumstance or anything like that. Let me say this, <clears throat> by certifying that you've got these vaccinations, would this not, I guess the word is, protect the person that's riding in the squad and perhaps going into a home that does have COVID or something like that. I think this in a sense is limiting our liabilities because if somebody goes in and is riding in that squad has not had the proper vaccinations and precautions and gets COVID or something else are we not putting ourselves in a liability state? Well, Clark State's taking all the liability I, I mean I they're agreeing to be liable for, I mean, it's pretty extensive what they're agreeing to, that the city's not on the hook for basically anything with this agreement. But as I read this, this is their, their, I guess, qualifications for that person to ride in that squad. That's, with Clark, us. that's Clark State's qualifications, yes. correct. So basically, I don't think we've really got, I won't say a right, to state what their recommendations are. Now, maybe I'm wrong. I wouldn't think so. Any other comments? <clears throat> Go ahead, Ken. I was just curious, will all the students be over the age of 18? I mean, there's no way we'll have a younger student. Yes, there will be, ma'am. There are, to, to obtain a EMT certification or a paramedic certification or a fire certification, you have to be 18 or above. I know but sometimes you can start school younger than they start school, but they're not state cert. They're not allowed to take state they're certification tests okay. until they're. All right. Yeah. 
Go ahead, Mr. Vaughn. I guess I understand what Mr. Lindsay is saying um, with this. <clears throat> is there a way we can get clarification on this before we can we table this and get clarification on that one line before we that it gives the applicant the ability to I want to maybe clarify a little bit so they have to meet these requirements at Clark State regardless if we do this or don't do it so when we when they hop on our seat it's like they already have it like so they can't be in the program unless they exactly sign exactly on to yeah this. yeah they have this well before we they even get to us yeah this is a program requirement not a ride along requirement requirement gotcha so at that point it puts the situation back on Clark State and not on us almost the whole thing everything do we all understand it now or is there still some questions. I perfectly understand it. That wasn't the question. That wasn't the question. All right, I'm going to call for a vote. Okay. Um, Councilman Lindsay? No. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grow? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shammy? No. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Passes five to two. Okay. So for the ordinances tonight, we have two introduction and six actions. Ordinance 2024-28, introduction on 61024, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance amending section 618.21 of the codified ordinances regarding the keeping of chickens at residential properties within city limits. Second. So um, for an explanation of this ordinance, we're bringing, bringing this back since ordinance 2024-26 passed via the uh, voters and then which in case anyone hasn't heard it will be effective five days after the county certifies the results so in the meantime with uh 24-28 this one was adding permits um such as let me find some of these things um a few additions where the breeding of chickens is strictly prohibited um, having some building permits on the the coop itself um adding a um annual fee to it was in 28 and um, the little bit of on D abatement in addition to other other legal recourse to which a city may be entitled a violation of this section is deemed to constitute a public nuisance and shall be subject to abatement procedures by the city under the Ohio revised code and or city ordinances Any comment? I'm, Go ahead, Kelly. I'm going to agree with the people who spoke. The chicken coop is no more, no less, really, than a dog cage outside. The Actually, it's probably less because they don't bark and carry on like dogs do. Um, they're not dangerous animals at all. I, I just, to me, the whole thing seems pretty silly. And I think we should give it a shot before we go trying to put it in a little box and keep it all tight. Go ahead, Ms. Bro. This is not what the people voted on. This is a slap in the face to the citizens who voted on this with the facts that they were given per the ordinance that was already passed by council and went through the referendum. This is a major overreach. And lest we forget that the, another ordinance was also passed the same day on June 3rd regarding the coops and the chickens um, in a separate ordinance seems to be uh, forgotten. Anyone else? Okay, Councilman Shammy. I have to agree with 
Councilwoman Grow and Councilwoman Wright, and I've never heard barking chickens. So, no. No. The city doesn't do anything about barking dogs. Mm -hmm. We've got one right next to us that barks and constantly. I never the city hear it. does nothing about I never hear it. <laughs> Councilwoman Wright? Are we voting now? Yes. Oh, yes. No, what I don't know. <laughs> what are we voting for? I'm sorry. For chickens. To pass this, is, my answer is no. I am sorry. No. I screwed that. Councilman Lindsay? You did. No. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove? Absolutely not. Councilman Bond? No. So this one fails five to two to five. Ordinance 2024-29, Introduction 61024, Public Hearing and Action Tonight, an ordinance amending Ordinance 2028-08 for the purpose of updating the fee schedule for miscellaneous fees and permits required by the City of New Carlisle, Ohio. Removed. Second. An explanation of this ordinance was to add a $5 annual recertification fee uh, for the fee schedule uh, concerning the previous ordinance and the permits. Does, Any comment? Does this one die <clears throat> automatically because the other one didn't pass? No, you get a motion in a second. It's got a vote on it now. Okay. Just double checking. So nothing else? Councilman Knight? No. Councilman Lindsay? No. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove? No. Councilman Bond? No. Councilman Shamey? No. This fails two to five. Okay. <coughs> Ordinance 2024-52, introduction 916-24, public hearing and action tonight, creating the Monroe Meadows Tax Increment Financing Incentive Districts, declaring improvements to the parcels with Within each, within each incentive district to be a public purpose and exempt from real property taxation, requiring the owners of those parcels to make service payments in lieu of taxes, establishing a municipal public improvement tax increment equivalent fund for the deposit of those service payments, requiring the distribution of a portion of those service payments to the Tecumseh Local School District and the Springfield Clark Career Technology Center, and specifying the public infrastructure improvements that benefit or serve parcels in the incentive district. You got anything to say on it, Howie? No, I need a motion. Oh, I vote well ahead. So move. Second. Second. Go ahead. Second. Second. Okay. And an explanation of this ordinance has already been, this is the third reading now. Uh, this is actually the one that we've been tabling a couple times till we got uh, the footages of the water, sewer, and uh, storm and street curb gutter that was through all the phases. So this breaks it down into various taxing districts. And as, as it explains in the ordinance, some of the funds out of the tipping funds uh, will be utilized for possibly the Addison, New Carlisle, things like that. City can get some funds. And then the, some of the funds can go back to the developer to repay a portion of their infrastructure that they put in. Um, the only one that this does not affect is to come to local schools, CTC, they, they still get their amount, I think, fully. Everybody else will just get reduced, county, township, stuff like that. Go ahead, Bill. So just to clarify, I think I know what it is. This is the part of the TIF that we've been talking about, correct? Yes, from Monroe Meadows. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any further comment? Yeah. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chamey? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Accepted seven to zero. Um, Ordinance 2024-57, introduction 1028-24, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager or the director of the public service assistant city manager to enter into an agreement for the city's <coughs> water main and service line replacement project. Uh, second. And an explanation of this ordinance is actually uh, my job on this one. 
This is to replace a lot of the old section where we have lead goosenecks, which are currently not considered lead, but I was still able to get the grant, because they will be in a couple of years, so we'll have already been ahead of the curve on getting rid of those uh, lead pieces out of the system. The total grant and what, uh, the $20,000 that the city will put into it is $2.412 million for the project. The bids came in, as you saw, at $1.7 million estimated. So there is room for us to expand this project, possibly, and we are working on that now to maybe do a little bit more work on some of our older mains. So, you know, I'm requesting to go ahead and spend all the way up to the grant amount as much as I can. Go ahead, Kathy. I guess my, my one question would be, the person who won the grant was Choice One, and it looks peculiar to me to see Choice One typed in and then everybody else has a hand signature. It looks to me like they're not really favoritism, but kind of in that way, it appears that way. I'm just wondering how that happened. Are you how talking, so they're our design engineer. They're not the uh, um, contractor that's to be awarded. They, I hired Choice One to do the design and construction administration on this project. Okay. So they make all the bid tabs, they make the sign-in sheets. So they pre-fill in their information before they come. If you see my name, it's right, typed in there as well. Right. Yeah, it's just because he already pre-fills it out for us. Okay. And then at the contractor's meetings, we don't know who's showing up. Right. So then they, they just fill in their spots. Okay, it just looked peculiar to me. On that. So the, the actual winner of the bid was Outdoor Enterprise? Yes, yes. And do you, when you guys go through these <clears throat> bids, is that a closed door session or is that something? No, so basically when we receive the bids, the bid opening date in the legal ad right. specifies like 1030 at the firehouse. Mm -hmm. So then whoever wants to come to those, they're, they're open. They're all, it's all in a legal ad two times. Mm -hmm. And then mostly the contractors come because they want to see it and we lay the bids out for inspection. So this contractor A can go look at contractor oh. B's numbers and and go through all that. So okay. choice one is not a contractor at all. They're, okay. they're my design engineer. That's good. I, I appreciate the explanation. Mm -hmm. And so that if I wanted, if I was curious to see what people are bidding, I could also come to that meeting or not? Any, any, it's Anybody open. Yep. Can. Okay. I appreciate the info. Thank mm -hmm. you. Absolutely. Any further? If not, uh, vice mayor Eagleston. Yes. Mayor cook. Yes. Oh, Councilwoman Grove. I think so. Yes. Yeah. You seconded it. Oh, you seconded it? I seconded it? Uh, you did, she did the last one. Oh, yeah. Okay. My, my biology. Uh, Councilwoman <laughs> Grove. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Thank and you. Councilman <laughs> Lindsay. <laughs> yes. Except for the I was reading and listening to her and not you. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so Ordinance 2024-58, Introduction 11-424, Public Hearing, Action on 11-18-24. An ordinance authorizing the City Manager or the Director of Public Service Assistant City Manager to enter into a contract for the purchase of water softening rock salt. Uh, ordinance 2024-59, Introduction 11-4-2024, Public Hearing and Action on 11-18-24. An ordinance amending Chapter 276 of the Codified Ordinances of New Carlisle for the purpose of establishing parks and recreation and public service commissions and to provide guidelines for commissions. I, All right, before we go any further, I'll go ahead, Kathy. I do have a question about the Ordinance 2459. You didn't do it, G. Huh? Is, you didn't do G. Huh? Would you? 20, 20, yeah. 24, 60. We're stopped right now. At All right, the wait, end of that. wait a minute, wait a minute. Yes, back to Kathy. Um, yeah, the the oh gosh, I'm on the wrong page now. The ordinance for the parks and establishing the guidelines for the commissions. Um, at the last meeting, we asked for a revised um, statement because those were very specific, and we talked about uh, the difference between a commission or a committee and an actual board, and we were gonna separate those out. So is this a separated out thing, or is this just another one of the exact same thing we had last time? This is the, <clears throat> so the ordinances were amended to add commissions, and there was the Public Service Commission and the Parks and Recreation Commission. Mm -hmm. And the big thing with that was, um, they were supposed to be $50 a month for serving on the, the commission. Right. And that, you wanted that removed. You, 
and and so, also so reduced. that's what this does and then that handbook was a separate ordinance and that's going to require some additional work because it was done by administration over i, I don't know who worked on it it, mm -hmm. it wasn't me but basically that's going to have to be done at a later time so all this one does is takes off the pay that we had, but it still has all the other rules for. Those rules never went into effect. They never went into effect. Okay. All right. I thank you all for being patient with me tonight. Anything further from anyone else? All right. Go ahead, Chris. On uh, G. Did you want me to read that one? Or you have, this is where yeah, you read, read G. Read I don't want to go into Okay. Ordinance 2024 60, Introduction 11 424, Public Hearing and Action on 11 18 24. An ordinance amending the City of New Carlisle Zoning Code to add solar energy regulations. All right. Now I need a motion to break rules of council to go into executive session for the discussion of uh, employment of a public employee. Mr. Did Ray. I say that right? Well, I think I need one go to, ahead, to I have amend the rules of council. I have a question to about to go. going into executive session for the, for the stated reason. If it's in reference to H and I, I think everything's been said that needs to be said. And I think with the newer developments of which you have been apprised of, I think we need to go into executive session. And I am still calling for a motion. So moved. Second. This will be for breaking rules of council first. Yeah. Right. So then we'll okay. need a second one. Okay. So we have April to move one and bond second. Uh, Councilman Chami? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? No. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? <coughs> yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yeah. Councilman Bond. Yes. Now I need a motion to win an executive session for the. <clears throat> so moved. Second. Before we go into the motion for executive session, can you say the whole statement for the discussion of public employees? For the employment of a public official. Okay. So it's time to do this. Right. Were you first, first or second? First. I was first. Right, second. Uh, Councilman Lindsay? No. Vice Mayor Abelston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yeah. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chami? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Accepted six to four. Six All right, with that, we're going into executive session. Chris, if you'll go ahead. Okay. So, Ordinance 2024 61E, introduction tonight, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance accepting Randy Bridge's resignation and approving a separation agreement and release and declaring an emergency. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, you need an explanation or are you ready to vote? Go. Any comment? Okay. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Grove? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Sheehan? Yes. <clears throat> Accepted seven to zero. <coughs> ordinance 2024-62E, introduction tonight, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance point, appointing Howard Kitko as interim city manager and declaring an emergency. So we have a second. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grove? Yep. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Accepted seven to zero. All right. Under other business, I'll refer my question to Mrs. Harris. So I believe the question was if we had a line item for advertising. Do we have line item or funds? We have a line item for legal ads. It's a combination. Um, we will maybe need to add to that. I don't know how much advertising we're going to do this year or if it's going to be in next year's budget. We will be bringing next week um, a supplemental to help support the contract, um, what we're talking about with, I don't know what I'm The funds involved, 
with the with the whole ordeal. Mm -hmm. um, we'll need a supplemental just to cover those because I'm also paid out of there as well. Um, so we'll just need some extra funds to cover everything. So that'll be coming as well. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. The, uh, uh, the uh, going off of the mayor's comment about the funds for the uh, advertising for a new city manager, uh, I would like to entertain with council the idea of, because we have a lot of things, housekeeping and stuff coming up between now and the end of the year. Council is going to be busy with getting the books and stuff in order for Ms. Harris, Mrs. Harris. I would like to put off even advertising until January, if not February. We do have six months before we have to do anything with an interim manager according to our charter. And since Mr. Kiko has just been made tonight, the interim manager, the clock starts tonight. So if we can do something in early February as far as an ad, if, if council would agree with that, I think that would be better. Get us through the holidays. That way people that's looking for jobs or whatever, they're not stressing about if they're going to get a job before Christmas. So I just think it would be better to do it after the first of the year or something. That's all I got to say on that subject. Hey, come, go ahead, Mr. Bond. Would there be a reason we couldn't advertise it and start collecting resumes, but just make it known that we're not going to act on those until after the first of the year? Because sometimes it takes a while to. The, if I may. Go ahead. The last time we did this, we got resumes. We put it out, I think, for two weeks. And in that two week period, we got resumes. But another thing that I don't know if council's thought about, uh, and I'm going to ask point blank, Mr. Kitko, would you be interested in being the new city manager of the city of New Carlisle? Because if I'm mis not mistaken before you answer, and this comments to the city attorney, I believe according to our charters and stuff, because we are promoting within, we can make him the city manager by, by a motion and if I'm wrong, correct me on that. Or do we have to go through the the uh, application process for to, to for him to, if he's interested, to put an application in like everybody else? Let me look at the charter. Okay. <clears throat> I wasn't ready for that. Question. Well, you can get back to us next Monday if you like. <laughs> I don't expect an answer tonight. It was a lot. But if, but if Mr. Kitko is interested in, in, in the position, I think this council should give him an opportunity uh, if we can do it via a motion. I personally think Howie would be an excellent manager. I've worked with him for 10 years. Uh, he's straightforward. He has no BS in his vocabulary anywhere. Uh, and and he is uh, very knowledgeable in how this city runs, I think. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lindsay, would you propose that now or at the first of the year? I'm in no rush to make him the manager. I mean, I just threw this out to council. Right. I mean, if you guys all want to do it tonight, I ain't got a problem doing it tonight. But I think council needs some time to think about it see if that if that's how we want to go uh i did i don't know i know the two ladies uh the new council members probably has not had much interaction with him uh i have you have i'm not sure about mr bond and i'm not sure about the vice mayor and the mayor uh the uh i think for the most part everybody on council knows who he is and they know some things about him. Uh, personally, I think he's a very smart and intelligent guy. And then, of course, if we make him the manager, then it's his job to bring us a suitable, new, excellent, to his qualifications, <laughs> a little pressure here, uh, the, uh, to, for his replacement. So he, he's got to get somebody, he's got to clone himself for the new guy or better. In, the, in that position. What say we give Mr. Kitko till 
next Monday to come up with an answer if he's interested. Well, that's up to him. If he wants to answer tonight, he can. Or if he wants to take, if he wants to take till January to answer, I'm fine with either one. I, I don't want to put pressure on him to do something tonight if he's not prepared to make that comment or that answer. Yeah, at this point in time in this setting, let me let me give it some thought. You know, pros, there's pros and cons to everything. So I want to evaluate those and then we could, uh, you know, it depends on what the rule you have to follow if you got to do applications or whatever. Right. And then we can have um, discussions in, uh, I believe, in a session or something, if that comes to that. I'm, I'm good. Go ahead. I'm, I want to speak up because I do want the choice to pick between options and abilities. I mean, I don't know how he that well except for through my husband's work, and I don't think that's a fair gauge of a person's character. Yeah, we all know we hate bosses. Right. <laughs> so I just want the ability to take applications and compare and pick and choose what I think was going to work best with our council. Anything further? <clears throat> Any other business that needs to come before council? <clears throat> the only thing I wanted to bring up to council tonight was something that we kind of briefly discussed a few meetings ago <clears throat> with the idea of changing, I believe it was our zoning, to not allow for businesses that we don't want in downtown area of New Carlisle. In particular, we were talking vape shops and smoke shops mm -hmm. and things like that. And... Um, so I guess I just wanted to see if council would be okay if we had Mr. Kitko get with the planning director and have him start moving the ball forward on changing the zoning in order to make sure that we have businesses that keep with the idea of a good small town where families can raise their kids and tighten up some of the types of businesses that we don't think are of that type that we want. Anyone? Anyway, go ahead, Bill. I would agree with Mr. Bond. I know at one point, uh, a few years ago, we had a vape shop. I think it lasted about two years before it, before it went out of business. It, I don't think it had the business that it thought it would have here in town. I'm not sure if the Marathon still sells uh, vaping items. I know at one time they did. But but I would not be opposed to uh, have something before us from planning or zoning to uh, restrict those type of businesses. And, and along those lines, I was talking to somebody the other day and they informed me we are getting a Dollar Tree or something where the old Rite Aid was. I'd like to see restrictions on that too. Do we really need another dollar store in town? We got one. I mean, we need. You know, I would much rather see a better use of that property, like a steakhouse or something, or a decent restaurant, than another dollar store. Go ahead, Mr. Chamey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I've had three residents ask me if we're getting a Kroger. Is that true? Yeah. We've been told that we were getting a Kroger. Yeah. Um, my assumption would be when the developments take off, if they go, that would be the potential. You know, right. they got people out there needing rooftops, needing headcount to be able to um, uh, make it worthwhile to them. Mm -hmm. Right. But no, there's there's nothing that I'm aware of. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Kathy, you had something. Not recently. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Uh, Vice Mayor Eagleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grove. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Seven, seven.